So today we're celebrating Trinity Sunday. How many of us walked into church this evening and dipped our finger in the holy water font and then made the sign of the cross on ourselves? Did we really think about what we were doing? Or was it just something that was done out of habit? Trust me, I'm not pointing any fingers because I'm just as guilty as the next. Sometimes I come strolling in and I forget to sign myself at all. Having said this, I'd like to share a little story with you. Recently, I was at a customer's house, and as I cleaned her carpets, I noticed that in almost every room I entered, she had these little post-it notes stuck here and there. And I'm really not a nosy carpet cleaner that snoops into your business but I've been cleaning carpets for so long that it's become second nature to me. I really don't even have to think about it. I walk into your house, I look at the carpets, I see what stains are there, I pre-treat them, and then I bring the equipment in, and it pretty much does all the work. I just stand there and push it back and forth over the spots until they're gone. So it's very monotonous and somewhat thoughtless work. So out of sheer boredom, I look around at things in the room while I'm cleaning. And as I moved from room to room, I noticed more and more of her little post-it notes. They'd been strategically placed for her to see, and I assumed that she had done this herself because they were in a woman's handwriting. They were in her bedroom. They were in her dressing room on the mirror where she sat and put her makeup on. They were in her office, and yes, they were even in her bathroom. What I found so fascinating about these little notes was what they all pertain to. They all pertain to God. They said things like, Lord, thank you for all, your, all of your wonderful gifts. Lord, thank you for loving me. And Lord, please let, re let me remember you throughout the day. There were many others that I can't remember exactly what they said, but I do remember how neat of an idea it was. Seeing all of these notes told me that this lady either had a great relationship with God or she was really working on one. And it was inspirational to me because so many times as I'm cleaning carpets in people's houses, I see no sign of Christianity at all. So when I had finished cleaning, I told her how much I enjoyed seeing all of the little notes to her herself about God. So she smiled and she asked me if I was a Christian. My answer was yes, I'm Catholic. She told me that she was Baptist and went to one of the local Protestant churches. And I thought for a minute that as soon as I told her I was Catholic, the conversation about God would end, but it didn't. We stood there in her kitchen and we talked for a long time about God and how important he was in each of our lives. And at one point in the conversation, she looked at me and she goes, hey, what's that thing you guys do? And the next thing I know, I'm standing there looking at her and she's trying to make the sign of the cross on herself. And let's just say that she messed it up. And she messed it up so bad that I decided I might as well show her how to do it. So I made the sign of the cross on myself, and I even told her the words as I did it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And when I was done, she was standing there grinning at me. She said she was jealous. She said that her church needed something cool like that. I asked her if she believed in the Trinity. I assumed that she did. And she said she did, so I promptly told her that I just happened to know of a place where she could do that as much as she wanted. <laughs> Obviously, I was talking about the Catholic Church. But I didn't want to push it any further, so I just told her that she could practice making the sign of the cross on herself before and after every time she prayed. And she asked me why we made the sign on ourselves, so I told her the simple stuff. We do it before and after prayer. We do it as a sign of reverence. We do it because we believe in the Trinity. She stood there and listened intently 
as I told her these things, and I could tell that she was genuinely interested and appreciated my answers. It was funny to me that here I am standing in the Protestant's house, and as I'm getting ready to leave for the next job, I see her standing there making the sign of the cross on herself. She kept doing it over and over so she wouldn't forget how to do it. And of course, me being a smart aleck, I couldn't help myself, so I jokingly told her that she better not slip up and do that in front of her Protestant friends or she'd have a lot of explaining to do. So we both laughed and I said goodbye and was on my way. I hopped in the van and drove off. But as I was driving to my next job, I just couldn't stop thinking about how important that simple little gesture is and how many times I'd mindlessly performed it. We as Catholics are showing the world that we believe in the Trinity, the triune God, one substance, three distinct persons. I wondered how many times I had made a quick sign of the cross on myself in public. I wondered how that looked to others. That little gesture is so rich. That simple little gesture. If we look back in the church's history, we see that so many great minds have devoted huge amounts of time and energy into fighting for or trying to explain the Trinity. We have minds like Tertullian that argued against heresies that sprung up about the Trinity itself. We have the councils of Nicaea and Constantinople that were called to give us the Nicene Creed that has been said in our church for almost 2,000 years. We have men like Origen that taught about the two natures of Jesus, meaning that Jesus was both fully divine and fully human. Athanasius argued for Christology and the Incarnation. Basil argued about the Holy Spirit, also known as pneumatology. His arguments are reflected in the Creed when we say, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Gregory of Nyssa gave us the argument about how the Holy Spirit illuminates the mind. It sounds all complicated, but the point of all this is really simple. The Trinity is a mystery that many minds greater than mine have devoted their lives to. And I can't begin to explain that mystery any better than the great minds that I have mentioned. But I do know that all we need to do to be reminded of that mystery is to look at the Mass. We need to listen to the Creed the next time we're saying it. We need to pay attention to the words and not just let them be another mindless part of the Mass that we recite from memory. When we make the sign of the cross, we need to remember what it stands for. We need to remember that it represents the Trinity and that the Trinity is the cornerstone of our faith and salvation. We touch our forehead, our brain, the source of all our thought. We touch our chest, our heart, the source of everything we feel. We also touch our shoulders, the muscles that give us the strength to work. So don't be like that nosy carpet cleaner that's been scrubbing rugs for so long that he doesn't even have to think about what he's doing. Take pride in the gift that we have. And remember that the only reason we know the Trinity is because God chose to reveal it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. As we make the sign of the cross and say the words, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, there's a beautiful analogy that comes to mind. Everything I think and everything I feel and everything I do, I offer up to you.